This week, we're sitting down with the experts in the field of parasitology and several representatives from Beringer Ingelheim Vet Medica Incorporated to talk about innovative solutions for the health of your herd and how to positively impact your bottom line. Joining us today are Dr. Jody Wade, Professional Services Veterinarian with Beringer Ingelheim Vet Medic Incorporated. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Dr. Christine Navarre is the Extension Veterinarian with Louisiana State University Agricultural Center and is also President of the American Association of Bovine Practitioners. Mm -hmm. We have Dr. Jerry Woodruff, also a Professional Services Veterinarian with Beringer Ingelheim Vet Medica Incorporated and Dr. Thomas Yaswinski, university professor with the Department of Animal Sciences at the University of Arkansas, and I'm certain I'm gonna mess that name up sometime. We're well, doing all right so far. Okay, <laughs> uh, well, well, let's get started. You know, parasite control is an area of great concern for most cattlemen, and, and I guess, Dr. Yaswinski, I'd like to hear from you. What is your, going on? What are some of your thoughts relative to the parasite problems we're seeing across the country? Well, um, we're primarily talking here about worm control and worm epidemiology in cattle. You know, they've got a bunch of external parasites and internal parasites, but the focus evidently of this program is just, just worms. And thankfully, we're just dealing with cattle worms. Uh, resistance in horses, resistance in, in small ruminants like sheep and goats is basically out of control. But still with cattle, even though we have a lot of resistance, it's a resistance that perhaps through management and correct treatment regimes will be able to uh, to counteract and, and correct until a new product comes out. Uh, as to when that might be, don't know. At, probably at the earliest, five to 10 years before a new product becomes available for cattle use. So what we have now, we better take every measure possible to, to preserve the mm. effectiveness of the products that we have. I didn't realize that. Dr. Wade, what are some specific issues you're seeing in your part of the world? In my part of the country, the stalker industry is dealing with Ostertagia, the brown stomach worm, is probably the predominant parasite of concern. Uh, it's still, without a doubt, the most pathogenic parasite that we deal with in that part of the country. But the other parasite that has really come to the forefront lately has been Coperia, and we're always trying to find out, is that really a pathogenic parasite and something that we have to worry about for the future? Dr. Navarre, you spent a lot of time on the Gulf Coast. Tell us what you see there. Uh, we also see ostracogiasis, that's our, our biggest problem, uh, but we see liver flukes and that was a problem last winter. We had a very severe uh, winter weather-wise, so that made the liver fluke problem worse. Uh, this fall, we're also seeing some type 2 ostracogiasis, which um, the brown stomach worm in the south, it doesn't like the summer heat, and so it gets in the stomach of the cow and it just kind of sits there and it waits. And then in the fall, they all come out at once and it causes very severe damage to the, the abomasum of those cows and, uh, and it causes actual clinical disease. And mm -hmm. so we've seen some of that this year that we haven't seen in past years. Dr. Woodruff, how does that compare to what you're seeing in terms of the challenges in uh, the northern regions of our country? Well, what we're seeing in our part of the country is uh, any parasite load that cattle have has a negative impact on their performance. Mm. And with the uh, cost of rations being higher this year because of uh, uh, grain prices being higher, it, the, the parasite problems are reflected as more of a problem in cattle performance. Dr. Wade, uh, I've heard some things about resistance. Uh, do you sense that there's an increasing problem with resistance? Yes, no doubt. I mean, we, we, we feel like we're seeing resistance issues in the southeast. Uh, we saw it in the small ruminant industry like Dr. Yaswinski talked about earlier and then in the horse industry mm -hmm. and that has really came in like a steamroller into the southeast into the cattle industry. And, and Dr. Navarro, what are you seeing or hearing from producers relative to this challenge of resistance? Yes, the producers are definitely aware of the, the issue and, and we all get calls um, on cases that, you know, we, it appears to be resistance, but it's not always that the, the parasites are resistant to the dewormers. Sometimes we don't use our dewormers properly. Mm. We don't use the correct dose, we don't store them properly, uh, don't administer them properly, mm. and those can look, uh, issues can look like resistance, but they're not really. So you need to get to the bottom, is, is it really a resistance problem or not? Now, Dr. Gazwinski, I understand that you've done a lot of research in this area at the University of Arkansas. What, what does that tell you? Um, well, the research I've done most recently has shown that there's a difference in the effectiveness of the pioneer products versus generic products and also there's a definite consideration that each producer must incorporate into his management regime to make sure that he strategically treats with the correct product at the correct time as far as the the transmission of the parasites concerned. Hmm. There's an awful lot going on in those areas. Well, I want to follow up on you or with you about something real specific. 
do you see, I mean, is resistance a regional issue, or is it something that occurs all across the country? What would you no, tell us about it's, that? it's all across our country. It's, it's across everywhere where they raise cattle. I mean, it's, it's, it's very much a, a constant critical concern in Australia, New Zealand, Europe. They're, they're very much uh, uh, focusing a lot of attention in Europe. Matter of fact, Europe, the resistance of, of cattle parasites is so uh, demonstrated and demonstrable and important that they feel that over there, they, the proper means of treatment is to go through a veterinarian or a suitably, a suitably qualified individual. They have a special term for them that are schooled in, in parasite epidemiology and drug efficacy. So that they make sure that the drugs are used through almost a prescription basis hmm. so that the treatment is, is effectively given at the right time. So they're trying to curtail the resistance that's already out of hand. Wow. So we don't have it nearly that bad, yeah. but we have plenty of resistance. And resistance, if you grow cattle in the United States, and even if you've had a closed herd, if you've used a product for more than two times a year, if you use it three times or more, you've got resistance hmm. on that particular operation. So there's plenty of resistance. And resistance that occurs in any part of the United States due to the, tra the, the, the transient nature of our cattle industry, calves going from here to there to there, and, and the purebred breeders and the, and the movement of cattle, regardless of where resistance started, it's across the whole United States hmm. right now. Yeah, I didn't realize it was that urgent of an issue. Dr. Wade, would your experience support the same conclusions? You bet. The, the research we're seeing coming out of that part of the country, we're seeing exactly the same, and it's been an exponential growth in resistance patterns across the southeast. And, and Dr. Yaswinski, again, back to you and your research. I'm interested, do you see this resistance uh, problem across all products? Or are there particular active ingredients that have more or less uh, problems with resistance? Um, yeah, there, there's, a, there's a stepwise variation in how effective the products are. Um, and it's, it's way too complicated for a 50 some odd minute program, but, but generally, generally speaking, you know, you're not going to find this out on every operation out there each time you go out and investigate, but generally speaking, it's my impression and the results of my research and, and, the, and, the, and basically a synopsis of the research being done in this area, the most effective product for parasites are, for all parasites, for all worms of cattle, it's cydectin. And then after that, you probably have to go to Doramectin, Dectomax. And then after that, you probably, you're, you're at a toss up between the Ivermectins and the, and the white dewormers. And, that, and this is all in relation to, to the, the overall population of worms inside your cattle. Going specifically to resistance, the white dewormers do best for resistant stages because we're talking worms that are resistant basically to the cydectins and the ivermectins and the doramectins. But still, even having said that, I have seen some resistance, but still efficacious activity of cydectin even against the resistant stages. More resistance is shown against doramectin and more yet is shown against ivermectin. Ivermectin came out first, mm. so the worms that had the longest shot at that. And then came out doramectin, so they've had the next longest shot at that. Then came out cydectin. Cydectin is a little bit different molecule than those other two ectins. So the worms have had the least amount of time to develop resistance, plus it's a different mechanism. It's the same mechanism, but it's a different molecule they're resisting. Mm -hmm. Now, in addition to that, that stepwise cydectin, doramectin, dectomax, and, and ivermectin, we also have this, this big quandary of the generics. Mm -hmm. like even though they're supposedly the same ivermectin in, in, as in the Pioneer products, the research that I've done and it's been done around the world has shown that the generics don't have, generally speaking, do not have the effectiveness mm. that ivermectin does. And ivermectin has the least effectiveness of the other uh, major molecules. That is interesting. Dr. Wade, what other insight would you add relative to the discussion about specific active ingredients and, and the resistance issue? What we've seen in our part of the country with economics uh, the way it is now, everybody's really price sensitive about what they're trying to, to spend on cattle. And with the generics, that's always been a, a, a underpriced product compared to our Pioneer products. And we have seen exactly what Dr. Yaswinski has talked about, where folks have put in these generic uh, products into, into their deworming program. We've seen problems with it. Uh, and just point blank, I guess, a, as a final thought on that is, is there's no way that any of those generics will ever mount up to any of the Pioneer products. They just can't do it.